morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our Coffee and Chats. My name is Lindsay Giese, and I'm the Executive Director for River Arts, Inc., and I am here today with also a South Prairie alumni, Sam Ness. Good morning. Good morning. Got my, got my coffee here. Cheers. Oh, cheers. <laughs> so, I know you have a lot of fans around here. Um, like you're, you could be the closest thing to a celebrity um, that I'm interviewing here. I don't, I don't know about fans. I think I, I just have a lot of friends in in Sog. Fans and friends. <laughs> that's it's the same thing. So yeah, I, I like to start these videos um, for our viewers who don't know a lot about you. Um, if you want to just talk a little bit about your backgrounds and um, both in like school uh music just a little story yeah. totally uh grew up in sock area went to uh sock prairie high school of course best high school in um the midwest probably in the country um and did all the all the things that they had to offer there um with the uh, music department and some of the sports stuff and uh yeah it was uh that was pretty sweet and then did some traveling afterwards, left home for quite a while, uh, circled back around, and now I'm, I'm back here for a little bit until I uh, wander off again. Uh, what, and so I guess it, this doesn't have to be um, just high school based, but a lot of people know you from your time in the music program. What was your favorite role you've ever played? Mm, I think that, um, I think Hair was my favorite show yeah hair was a lot of fun because um well I, I still haven't cut my hair you know much since and uh get a little but no it was just a really fun role to uh to kind of go into the the hippie world and in, in that time period and uh it was kind of my first you know real real part so I I think that was a, a real special moment for me what would it what's one of your dream roles Ooh. Um, let's see. I think I would love to go back and play um, in Les Mis. I'd like to do Beljean. Jean Beljean. Um, you know, what's interesting is uh, our our interview last week was with South Prairie Middle School principal, Ted Harder, and he had the exact same dream role. Really? Yes. No way. Yeah, he and I have so many similarities it's actually my dream role as well <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that you did a lot of traveling and i think for most people when they hear that like a lot of traveling is like a lot of traveling is maybe visiting a few countries how many countries did you visit and how how many months were you away uh the first time it was just shy of 10 months uh, I started in Edinburgh, Scotland, um, went there as, uh, I think it was like two weeks after I turned 18, I left, and then with my guitar and this wonderful, big, uh, naive idea that I was going to like make it, whatever that means, and uh, I was wrong, and I ran out of money and became homeless and learned how to be a professional street performer, so I spent those 10 months uh, hitchhiking and uh just kind of hopping buses across most of Western Europe and the UK. Uh, that trip, I think I made it through six countries. Um, yeah, loads of fun. It was awesome. Wouldn't wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, I mean, I feel like so. So you've performed several house concerts here at the gallery, and so we always chat when you come in here. Um, I feel like there was like a story about a, like you met some people hitchhiking with a van and you had nowhere to stay and like you ended up staying in the van. Oh yeah, I um when I when I get grumpy, I go outside for a really long time and um <laughs> I kind of had this idea that I was going to go to the Isle of Skye, uh which is like kind of the most remote barren place that I could see and so I was hitchhiking there and I was in Oban, and I met these these folks um, in a pub, and they said they were going north, and ran into them later, and I was like, hey, can I still catch a ride? And they're like, totally. So I went and I bought a fishing pole and a slingshot, 
and I was going to live off the land with those for a while. So I asked them to just kind of ditch me out in the middle of nowhere. And they, knowing more than I did, were like, yeah, sure, go ahead, go uh, do your thing. And when you get hungry, we're going we're gonna to be right here camping for a couple of days. And so it's like, all right, well, nice knowing you. And um, yeah, sure enough, I didn't realize that Scotland killed pretty much everything that's wild like 600 years ago. So there's nothing to live off the land there. Uh, and I got real hungry and came back and they had some food waiting for me. And yeah, I, I ended up uh, traveling with them in their big red van named Clifford for um, a couple of weeks. And then- What did you do with the slingshot since you had nothing to- Oh, I, I still have it here somewhere actually. Um, yeah, I, I've always kept it with me. <laughs> have you ever gotten anything from that slingshot? No, yeah. no. I. Um, sadly stuck to my um you know dried fruit and nuts um it seems but, like something that people could dream of doing but i think the reality of hitting something with a slingshot is it's probably more difficult yeah i think so but you know when i when i was uh 18 i i could do it all oh, i was i was invincible yeah and now you're <laughs> all of 20 22 i'm 22. still a child yeah don't let that beard deceive you <laughs> This is my quarantine period. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so that was the first tour, and then yeah. you did another tour abroad. Mm -hmm. So those folks that I stayed in their van with them uh, came to visit me here in Wisconsin, and oh, then wow. the following year they asked me to come play their wedding in New Zealand. So I, um, yeah, so I, I made my way that way, and I figured if I'm going to go across the world, might as well have a look around. So I spent two months uh, hitchhiking across New Zealand. Uh, doing more street performing and made some awesome friends there. And while I was in the airport in um, in somewhere in Australia, I was trying to get to New Zealand and they wouldn't let me on the plane because I didn't have a return ticket in enough time. So uh, I needed to get out of the country. So I got online, found the first flight within that time out of the country and it just happened to be to Bangkok. So I ended up going to uh, Southeast Asia for a while and a friend of a friend of a friend knew this guy that knew an agent in Bangkok. So they set up a tour for a month um, through Thailand and Cambodia. Did, did 23 shows in the 26 days I was there and that was just a whirlwind of craziness. And uh, that, was a, that was a good adventure, yeah. <laughs> when you were there, where did you stay? Um, that was mostly hostels. Um, yeah, I was in hostels, uh, and, and some friends that I made stayed with them for a little Just bit. Pretty much traveling with your guitar and your amps and a backpack. Yeah. At one point, actually, I couldn't, um, I didn't have enough room. So I ditched the rest of my bags and this, this little guitar here, I used this as a suitcase. I just, um, put all my clothes inside of it and traveled with that okay. and then had a, a little bag for a couple of my my special effects pedals and it was just uh my guitar as a suitcase and my little bag wow yeah that, that was um that was great and it's i still felt like i had too much stuff i just kind of wanted to you know isn't that amazing thing. yeah i love it but then when i come back here and and i'll be on the road for you know three, four weeks at a time uh, across the Midwest. And they're like, wow, that's all? That's, you know, the only things you have are what's in your van? I'm like, I have a whole van full of stuff now. <laughs> like, that's, it's way too much. I need to get rid of that too. <laughs> yeah, so the van, so I know a lot of people, uh, well, I hope that they got to see the pictures and videos of you painting your, your other van, which yeah. is no longer with us. <sighs> the adventure <laughs> van is no more yeah you have a new van right i do yeah and will that be painted no that one is uh much more incognito i realized that i drew a lot of attention to myself uh sometimes when i didn't want to um for things like the police and things like um people trying to rob me and you know trying to break into my van when i'm sleeping in it and things like that so this one looks like a rusty old you know plumber van so i'm gonna kind of <laughs> leave it that way <laughs> all right we won't we won't show an image of it during this video <laughs> yeah keep it secret so with all of your travels I know this is always a hard question. People ask me this all the time too. Um, but what would be maybe your top three cities like that you just loved and would go back to again? Mm, I, I spent a lot of time in Glasgow, Scotland. 
um, loved it, loved uh, every minute of that would, uh, thought about moving there at one point and, uh, but you can't really, you know, you can't bow hunt there. There's not as many, you know, cheese curds and things like that. I couldn't do it. So um, that's definitely one of them. Another real magic spot is Queenstown, New Zealand. Um, just really stunning. This this lake in the mountains and um, the whole city is like a little mini Europe. It's all full of travelers and it's, it's really serene and uh, very cool. Uh, third one I'd say is Koh Rong, an island just south of Cambodia. Uh, I did some some shows on and uh, really really magic. There's no you know plumbing. There's no um, anything that's super cozy, but all you're on the on the ocean all the time, crystal clear water, and um, it's just wow. gorgeous. So you just bathe in the ocean and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I had a friend. Just live on the land, just live off the land. Yeah, I had, I had a friend that was there, had been there for a couple of years, and he said he didn't remember the last time he wore a shirt. And he's a bartender; he's just kind of, you know, <laughs> walking around doing his thing, wake up and go for a run on the beach, and that's that. There was a night that I had finished playing a show there, and um, they we we had a lot of fun. It was kind of a party show, and I was a little loosened up and they some some friends that I had made earlier came into the show and they're like hey you want to come uh jump in the ocean with us and I was like totally let's do it so I uh you know kind of left everything there and I'd left my shoes on a different island and my phone was dead and so we ended up running across to the other side of the island uh just using the moonlight and just like barefoot running through the jungle and we got to the other side and jumped off at this big long pier and they're like look down so I looked down I I thought that I was like um a little too loosened up and they uh no sure enough there's bioluminescent plankton in the water there and so it's like avatar when you move your hands it's like you know everything glows it's really really strange so that was a that was a cool moment did you get your shoes back uh yeah yeah I I um at the end of that little part of the tour I was playing a bunch of island shows between Korong and Korong Semlom and uh you just, you don't need shoes there. So I just kind of left them with a friend and um, didn't want them anymore. <laughs> what, now we, well, we were just talking about positive and now I'm going to go to a darker. Sure. All right, what was the coffee. scariest thing that's happened to you? Yeah, more coffee for sure. <laughs> what was the scariest thing that's happened to you when you were, you know, just living off the land and hitchhiking and backpacking? Hmm. Um, see, there's been, there's been a few things had some folks um try to kill me a couple times um that'd be, cla that'd be classified as scary yeah i mean it happened every now and again traveling especially when you get to a new city um street performers are really territorial and they they always have their turf and when they're gonna play certain times and when new people come in not knowing and step on other people's toes you know you're stepping on their their income so people get a little frustrated and if that person traveling through being me was as broke as I was, I got to play, you know, so you, you got to do what you got to do. And uh, that happened now and again. There was a couple moments in Paris, a um, couple moments in, in Lisbon, um, different spots. But Glasgow was the one that, that really stuck out to me. There was uh, a group of professional beggars that they made their living. They all lived in a big house together and they had a uh, coordinated who was going to drive them all there to the to the you know area uh, they had shifts and there was kind of like a back alleyway where they would all hang out and party all night and then three people would be kind of begging in this this area called Ashton Lane and when those three people would get cold they'd get up and three would take their, their place so that the income was coming all night long and they could all have fun and get drunk um, but when I was there, they could only fit two people begging. So I was impeding, you know, a third of their income. And they, they tried to scare me off a couple of times. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty friendly, I think. It, I wasn't too worried about it. <laughs> and then they, uh, one of them came after me with a knife one night. Um, but I had a microphone stand. And so that deterred him. And then <laughs> they, they poisoned me. Uh, they sent somebody else to give me some poison whiskey, which of course someone gave me some whiskey on the street. Why not? Uh, that almost killed me. I think it had bleach in it. Um, 
And the worst part about that from movies. <laughs> yeah, I, I you know, and I was eighteen, and so when I came home, and people are like, "Look out on State Street, it's, just, it's dangerous down there for an eighteen-year-old." I'm like, "Please," <laughs> I'm like, "That's nothing." Um, yeah, no, they they tried a couple of times, and the worst part is that I was supposed to go to a Kaylee, which is like a Scottish barn party where everyone wears kilts and, and oh. you know traditional food. I was supposed to go to that like two days after they poisoned me and I couldn't make it because I was so sick. And um, that was the part I, I was like, I don't care that you guys, you know, try to get me off your turf, but shoot, I missed the party. You guys suck. <laughs> and um, I came back and had had some conversations with them and we worked it out. And uh, we, we came to an understanding that I was just going to keep playing. So, yeah, that was that. Was that. There was um, like no thought of you know, just moving down the road somewhere? No, so that's the thing about Ashton Lane is it's this um, small part of Glasgow in the West End that's all owned by the same company. So it's really expensive on the whole strip. And the only way to get there is through this little alleyway. And so that's where all the, you know, more wealthy folks go to drink. And that's the best spot in, in Glasgow, which I shouldn't be saying this, you know, for the other street performers that are listening. So I'm going to have to compete against them, you know, poison some whiskey. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. And then that was how I made my, my income. That's what I needed to get by. And so we just kind of came to uh, um, an understanding. Actually, I bought them all a lot of beer and told them that they should stop trying to kill me. And uh, that was, that was that. Beer can solve all problems. It, it can, you know, that's the Wisconsinite in me. Like, all right, come on, let's have a drink. <laughs> if you have curds on you, think about what that could have done. Yeah, I should, I should have some, you know, just like keep them, keep them with me. With it, yeah. Uh, what? I know that you just released a new album. I did. Um, it's not online yet. The only way to get that album is on my website, um, www.samnest.us, for the folks watching. Um, you can get a, a physical copy or a download there. Uh, it'll be out on Spotify and iTunes and all the streaming platforms in about a month. Um, hopefully when I'm back on the road to tell everyone about it. <laughs> yeah, right. What would you say is, the, what's the hardest part for you when you're writing new albums? Or is it easy? Um, I feel like I had so much backlogged because I started writing when I was uh, like 14, 15, and I didn't uh, start recording until I was 18. And so I had written a lot of songs in that. So I was kind of working on those when I was, you know, 18 and, and during writing the Whisper on the Wind album, the first album, I had I had written so many other songs that kind of made its way into the second one. And then and I'd, I'm writing all the time. So it's just kind of um, saving things for the future. And, um, traveling is a big part of it, but also finding some, uh, some like grounding, some time away from everything is, is really good for my writing. So this time right now is, has been great. I've been working on a lot of creative ideas and um, working on new gear, new things for the stage that, that are hopefully a little more exciting uh, next time I come around. That's what gives me hope right now is thinking about all of the musicians and artists that have a little bit of time to create, like <laughs> could be some of the most amazing music or most beautiful things that we've ever seen after this. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was Nikola Tesla that said that the, um, the, the most important part of creativity is being alone, of, of being in isolation. Um, well, we I, did it. Yeah, I th I think so. Uh, <laughs> we uh, have had a lot of time to to think lately. Uh, is this new album? So this new album is some of your your earlier writings, or is it? Is there a theme to it? Or no, I wanted to make an album because my first album was very. Um, kind of jammy it was full band it was a sound that that folks weren't really used to hearing from me in a live show and uh just got together with a bunch of friends and got uh went into a barn and just jammed through some stuff and that's kind of just what it was uh the second album was a little bit more ethereal a little bit more like curl up with a cup of tea and do some yoga but not quite like my my live show um the best way i can describe it is i've always seen like i've seen albums as a painting whereas a live show is more like a photograph 
where you can set the scene and but once it, it's done it's done uh but an album you can go back and you can rework you can change the the timbres and the colors and the shapes of things um but folks i feel like wanted to take something with them uh that sounded like what they had heard that night so i decided to make this album live in studio um like that so i just went into the studio with my uh all my stage gear and just ran through everything once just like i would a live show and and there was no cuts or edits or overdubs and that's just kind of what it was cool yeah much more of a, a photograph in studio <laughs> i can't wait to listen to it soon thank you thank you yeah i i, or I, I hope so now. i can go get it right now you could at www.samness.us you could <laughs> Love it. Uh, so my kind of my last question for this little interview, but it's sort of a broader one, is uh, how how is life right now for musicians? What are you able to do? Um, like we kind of talked about what the good parts are that you you have some alone time to write, yeah. um, but what are the hard parts? How's it going? Yeah, it's uh, it's challenging for sure. Um, whereas you need, I think that's always the, the polarity of this, um, life choice is that we need to be on the road to advance our, our careers and, and make new friends and make new fans. Um, but we also need that downtime to be creative and to regroup for the next run. But yeah, it's, it's very strange because we can do our live concerts and, um, you know, through Facebook and Zoom and connect with people that way, but it's very one way. Uh, and we can see the comments pop up, but it's not like giving someone a hug. It's not like actually introducing someone to a new CD at your merch table. Um, and without selling merch, we're not making a whole lot of income right now, which is definitely challenging. Um, so buy the CD. Yeah, check out that website. <laughs> um, for me, that's really what keeps me going a lot of times is is making new friends on the road. I love going to new cities and I love going in new venues um, and just making my rounds and, and seeing friends and sharing stories and catching up. And um, without that, I felt like it's really hard to to stay motivated. I can't keep track of time at all as it is usually. <laughs> um, but when I'm not on the road, because I can see, you know, this tour will last six days. So at the end of that, I know that six days has passed. But right now, it's just kind of become an endless day where I'm like, I don't know what's going on anymore. Uh, There's no weekend. There's no weekend. <laughs> it's just. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that in Australia, the radio um, DJs have been told to. Um, share like hey it's 64 degrees here and it's two o'clock and it's also Tuesday you know <laughs> they're actually sharing the day of the week now because no one knows uh, they're trying to keep the general public in uh, in some sort of cohesiveness well this is Saturday if you're watching this on Saturday though but <laughs> I maybe just messed you up because it might be Monday when you actually see this <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I didn't actually know what day it was so I wasn't even going to try there <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know i feel for we, we work with us you know lots of musicians and artists and um yeah it's tough and i hear you yeah, people have asked me if i would do like a live not a live stream video like i don't have the capabilities of doing that i don't play an instrument but if i would like record a song or something and it's just singing to a computer it's just not the <laughs> not the same yeah it's not your people it's not and and for it doesn't feel the same as a stage you don't have the the response um it sounds different you know when when you hear the back of the room you know reverb coming back your own sound at you it just feels so different so it's hard to to get into that same space um but also maybe maybe a good thing for us because it's good to push ourselves and and take risks and uh you know try something that we're not used to so maybe maybe you should you should totally put a video up well we'll we'll see but um speaking of pushing ourselves and just just going for it anyway you've been kind enough to agree to maybe play a song for us yeah totally uh let's see yeah i'm gonna do 
the the single off of the new um, the new album, which actually is available on all streaming platforms. I'm going to be doing a video with uh, Dr. Bob Enright uh, next week. He's a um, he's an educator and a, a professor, and and um, he studied forgiveness. Uh, that has been his. Um, his work, which is incredible to share that message with people from, um, I know he's done a lot of work in the Middle East, uh, a lot of inner city schools in um, the States, a lot of places like um, parts of Northern Ireland and uh, Tokyo and where all over. Um, really excited about that. Just so happens this tune is called uh, Forgiveness and it's kind of about my own uh, journey with that. stopping me but I wake to find a darkness it was just another dream I open up my eye I understand that I must go it seems I've always stayed my welcome in the place that I call home my head down like so many times before I cry out for forgiveness as my knees fall to the floor I fear I know the answer and I fear fear itself I fear the only answer is to do this by myself or I know mm, I know and I make peace and I am safe my demons do not rest, and I just run away. If my pride looks like my courage, then how dare I speak of grace? I will find my path. I will find my path. I can find my strength. Brother, I have pain. And it doesn't go away. It's somewhere in my stomach. It's somewhere in my way. My brother, I have rage. And I can't live this way. My eyes, they cry for sunlight. Blind and all the same. I bow my head down like so many times before. I cry out for forgiveness as my knees fall to the floor. I fear I know the answer, and I fear fear itself. I fear the only answer is to do this by myself. For oh, I know, mm, I know. I make peace, I am saved. My demons do not rest, and I just run away. If my pride is like my courage, then how dare I speak of grace? I will find my path. I will find my path. If I can find my strength.
Thank you. I'll clap you for you. Much. You deserve lots of applause. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for that. That's a beautiful <laughs> message for right now too. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think right now we all have a lot of time to uh reflect and, and a lot of time to ourselves. And I think that anytime you have that uh opportunity, it's good to um to make ourselves better, to um try to improve ourselves and sometimes improving is just uh yeah forgiving uh that there's a virus out there we we gotta help each other <laughs> forgiving ourselves for not being able to, to do more with our this time right now and um, maybe forgiving things in the past or um things that you wanted to happen in the future or whatever there's a there's a lot to to do and heal right now yeah absolutely all right well, thank you so much. I'm gonna say one more time that you should go to Sam's website. What is it again? www.samnest.us. Awesome, buy a CD, support all of our local musicians if you can. And definitely when they're back out performing again, let's be there for them all together. So yeah. thanks Sam. Um, thank you so much for having me, Lindsay. All right, <laughs> take care, wish you well. <laughs>